Hey, it's Mike here, CEO of Responding Later Than Everybody Else to an Issue. And today we're going to talk about John Venus sadly no longer being vegan. Now, he did do that a while back, but this time it's real. I am just here to tell you guys my experiences, my shift in perspective, my new life choice. I'm not gonna be here to just rag on John Venus or be mean to him or anything. I'm mainly here to simply respond to his reasons that he says he's no longer vegan and see if those are legitimate reasons for other people to not be vegan because when influencers like this say they're not vegan, People follow influencers, and I don't think it was his intention to get people to try and quit, but people might sort of latch on to what he says as truth, and so I have a little bit of issues with some things he says in terms of logical consistency, and just some points like saying that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is like a biased vegan organization. These need to be addressed. But so some points about nutrition science and vegan toxicity, and a little bit about what we are naturally best suited to eat and so forth, so let's just get into it. Also, I am filming outside, and I'm holding my microphone right here because it's windy, and okay, I probably shouldn't have held it up. Now Frank Defano was going to Photoshop that for his own pleasure again. So I met John Venus for the first time last year at the UK vegan camp out. I consider him a super nice dude as well as his brother. I don't think he has any malevolent intentions here. Now worst case scenario, maybe he's trying to preserve his source of income because he mentioned some things about vegan clients at the end and, and maybe he's operating off fear here a little bit too much. Those are maybe my main criticisms. But beyond that, I really just want to focus on the ideas. I mean, there's gonna be enough people just drilling into him. You know, it's not gonna benefit anybody for me to do that. And he does have a little bit of a, a unique history here over the last year. He made his video saying how he no longer wanted to identify as a vegan because he thought that that label was toxic, but he wanted to keep eating a vegan diet slash a plant-based diet. He also then experimented eating eggs because one of his friends, a few of his friends said that they immediately saw amazing health results. He didn't see amazing health results, so went back to being fully vegan in terms of the diet. So that's worth noting. So when he finally came out and full quit with this video, I mean, one of the most liked comments was saying, this is not a surprise. A lot of people have predicted this. Now the topic of anybody's children is a very sensitive topic, so I don't wanna to get too deeply into that, but he starts out by saying, because two years ago, him and his partner, Catherine, had a kid, it changed his perspective and made him more serious about that. And just in terms of his view on vegan parents, I'll just echo his own words that he says later in the video. Here he is. We look up to so many vegan parents that are doing an amazing job raising vegan kids, and we respect him so much. But I really wanna just hop into his claims about nutrition and nutrition science in general. He says, I think I think we can all agree, or people who have looked into the scientific literature, we can agree that nutrition itself is a very confusing and not really understood topic. Um, and it is, you know, understood to a certain degree, but there are very many question marks. Right away, I just have to say, because there are unknowns in nutrition science, you just can't throw out the whole thing. But more simply put, saying that nutrition science is poorly understood is really just an excuse for doing anything, for eating human flesh, for eating 100% Doritos, I don't know, but there's a very large body of nutrition science that is well understood. We understand what nutrients the human body needs, what foods those are in, and other facts like how red and processed meat are carcinogens, according to the WHO, based off a large body of literature. You take a study and uh, you use that study to come to a conclusion, but then another person with a whole another uh, opinion will take that same exact study and come to a like uh, the opposite conclusion to someone else. Now, I absolutely agree with this point, but my conclusion from it is completely in the opposite direction. Because two people disagree doesn't mean that they're both right. Somebody can just look at the same study as somebody else and just be wrong. <laughs> and I will agree that there's probably a certain portion, probably a smaller portion of studies that are in a bit of a gray area, and we're still trying to interpret things in those areas, but there's a huge amount of scientific nutrition research that is pretty clear cut and most studies on vegans the conclusions are pretty clear cut simple example this intervention trial putting people on a vegan diet and measuring their inflammation proteins i mentioned this quite a bit nobody can look at this and conclude that the vegans had higher inflammation levels people put on a vegan diet had lower levels that's just the conclusion of the study a lot of times when you're vegan especially for me you are in this bubble you're only going to listen to other people with the same perspective that have the same mission to eliminate animal suffering, to live a plant-based lifestyle, a vegan diet. No, I, I can't speak for all vegans here, but for me, I feel like it's the opposite. Since going vegan, I have been constantly exposed to the opposite viewpoint. You know, every single argument against veganism, all of the studies, everything sent my way 
constantly seeing it, probably more than the pro-vegan studies, and looking to plant-based doctors like Dr. Greger, who reads a ton of research, doctors like him have also come to the conclusion that a vegan diet is a great way to eat. Dr. Greger sees all of the research, and all those other doctors see a ton of the research anyway. He keeps going with bias. It becomes almost like you have to only look for answers and research that comes from people that you know is gonna support your bias. Now, I would say that this is just a human brain issue. I see so many groups just doing this, period. It's not a uniquely vegan issue. It's a non-vegan issue, a vegan issue, a person issue. But I wouldn't say that there's any indication that vegans actually have this worse than people that eat meat. And I would say the vegan side has a potential to not be as bad as the other side here because they have actually had both perspectives. They have eaten up all of that pro-meat information in most cases at some point in their life, and then they switched, so they've been in both shoes. Anyway, he talks about how when he was vegan, he believed it was the optimal diet for health, and then he gets into that Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics statement. And in case you don't know, the American Dietetics Association changed their name to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They're the largest organization of nutritional professionals in the world, and they are the ones who have the position on vegetarian diet, saying that a vegan diet is suitable for all stages of life if adequately planned. The vast majority of the time that I was vegan, I really actually believed that it was optimal for human health because that is what we're being sold. Big organizations like the American Dietetics Association, after looking into the Dietetics Association, um, you know, corporate ties, all these you know, different corruptions that are going on. You know, this point was one of the main motivations for me to make this video because it's just patently not correct. I mean, if you're looking at the actual funding that this organization receives, right there on their sponsor role, you see the Egg Nutrition Center, as well as other very not vegan corporations. I mean, what is it, Big Strawberry here that's forcing them to create pro-vegan statements? Like vegans are the only ones that eat strawberries? No. <laughs> if anything, it's impressive to see an organization here that is taking money from an industry that does create a lot of very biased <laughs> studies and still making statements that might be contradictory to their sponsor's interest. In this case, that you could be healthy without eating eggs. I will say the main point that I take, at least from that position by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, is that the human body is more or less a machine that requires certain nutrients, and that machine does not care whether or not it happened to come from what used to be a living animal or some other source. I also want to mention Alfalfa Male, who made a response video to this. Beyond is what I know him as from my Discord server, helping me a lot on my Discord server, which is kind of asleep right now, but I want to do stuff in the future on there. He did a video, he's just starting up his YouTube channel, so go give him some support and watch his videos and see if you like him. Well, I don't know what calling the Academy of Nutrition bias is going to do. I mean, look, this is their public statement. There's 117 sources at the bottom. You should probably address even one of their points or the arguments that the authors are making. All right, now things get a little anthropological. I'm not comfortable of dismissing, you know, hundreds of thousands of years or even millions of years of a certain, um, you know, eating pattern and instead do something that requires supplementation to make possible, like B12, because, again, I used to think that you could get B12 from the soil and water, and that it, there is no scientific evidence for that to be true. I just want to say that just because we ate something in the past doesn't mean that it's the healthiest possible diet, because it seems like he's on a search here for the optimal diet. And yes, I do sometimes search for some answers in our anatomy or our history as to why, for example, a vegan diet is the only one clinically shown to reverse heart disease. Is there some anatomical explanation there? But by and large, I believe that we can be healthier than we ever could be eating what we did eat. In other words, what we ate to survive in history is not by definition what we must eat to thrive currently. I'll address the water point in a second, but B12, I mean, if you're talking about what a human should be consuming to thrive the most, I can make an argument here and say that vegans who are supplementing regularly will actually have a lower chance of deficiency than people who are relying on animal products for their B12. We see that in the higher statuses. You know, my B12 status is higher than the average meat eater. And then because of widespread supplementation and fortification in the most recent studies, several of them have shown, you know, vegans didn't have a higher rate of B12 deficiency. 
efficiency than people that ate meat. So I don't know why this is such a compelling point for him. And if you really do want to be making the case that you should be eating what we ate in nature and only that, then you also have to go a whole step further and you have to be not eating any processed foods at all, no sugar, no oil, you know, no salt if you really want to be looking at human history. And I don't think John has any intentions to do that. And Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan had a good goofy point saying that if you're just trying to do only things that are natural, then, you know, he shouldn't be pooping in a toilet anymore. <laughs> and those only vegans also had a good point saying that, you know, he can be really anti-supplementation, but he's also been very pro protein powder and I don't think he's going to stop that anytime soon as well. So do you have a problem with supplements? Clearly not. And even though I don't think it really matters since I have put the water in B12 point out there as like an interesting or notable point, I did mention this study where there was as much B12 in one liter of water as we require in a day approximately. And I want to say to say this for sure, we absolutely would need more data on it. I mean, ideally we would be able to get water samples of the Fertile Crescent. Sadly, the conditions are not the same there anymore. Maybe Northern African water sources would be really interesting to see. You know, until we have more data, this is really under-researched. It's just an interesting point. And then, of course, you know me, I made the video about how there's bioactive B12 in duckweed, which grows on water and is pretty much ubiquitous, especially exists in Africa. So I have no problem saying that the jury is out on this topic. I don't think that you can prove that there wasn't B12 from non-animal sources. We, again, need more information. And I have to ask questions about our relatives a million years ago. As he says, here's one known as the Nutcracker Man, who very clearly ate a diet of those starchy tiger nuts, as well as grasses and sedges, appears to be virtually entirely herbivorous. How would it get B12 over long periods of time without having a large source of animal products or regular source of animal products? Questions need to be answered. But in terms of his his notion to be just doing what we did in nature. Either he has to go full survivor mode and live in an area with absolutely no technology, eating only off the land, or he's just gonna be logically inconsistent here, so. I have had some question marks because of personal experiences, because of my real life observations, and you know, uh, nutrient deficiencies in people that are very, very close to me. I absolutely respect his desire to not share the personal details of this individual who had deficiencies. However, I feel like it's completely pointless to not share the nutrient, the specific nutrient. You know, was it iron? Well, it appears that from studies like this, vegans don't have higher rates of iron deficiencies. So if we at least know the nutrient, then he can make a strong case as to why this was a good reason to be quitting a vegan diet or not, or why other people should be worried or not. But there's definitely a mind trap that people fall in whenever there's any level of deficiency on a vegan diet, because deficiencies exist in a ton of diets. And as we can see from these studies, you know, there's different deficiencies for different diets. And if every meat eater decided to quit eating meat and go vegan every time they had a deficiency, let's just say a large portion of the world would be vegan. Taking it a step further, imagine if every meat eater who knew somebody with a deficiency decided to go vegan because of that. See how there's just not a logical reason for him to quit being vegan because of that deficiency? You know, and even if he doesn't want his kid to be vegan, again, as many people have said, there's no logical reason for him to then not be vegan as well. So there's no major notable health issue that he has. He hasn't said anything in that video about any health issues that he had unless I missed it. And if somebody just came up to me and asked me why I really think John quit his vegan diet, I think it actually has to do with family pressure. And I could be completely wrong here and that's fine. But if I had to guess, you know, they were living with Catherine's family who was hunting and all this stuff and they were probably pressuring him to not be vegan. Probably like many parents are very concerned about children being vegan. And so I think over time, it just probably wore him down. And perhaps that one deficiency that someone he knows has pushed him over the edge. But apparently his brother, Leo Venus, the doctor is still vegan for what it's worth. Anyway, next thing he says. I was always 100% certain that this was the healthiest diet for, for human beings because I was coaching a lot of people and I still will be coaching vegans and helping vegans to thrive. And people have railed into him really hard here saying, you know, he's just still trying to be slightly nice to vegans so he can keep some vegan clientele and not lose money. You know, that really doesn't bother me as much as just whether he is being intellectually consistent. If he's saying, I'm not gonna be a vegan diet because I think it is not healthy for people. And then he's saying, hey, vegans, you can be healthy if you're doing my coaching program. Like, I don't know, man, but I understand you gotta make a living anyway. <laughs> People have, like friends have kind of divorced themselves from, from me and like not wanting to have anything to do with me anymore. And this is like, people who I have, or I thought were really good friends. And other friends, really very close friends, who said, you know, that I 
<laughs> that they respect my choice and everything like that, but they can't be seen with me publicly because that is bad for their image because the vegan movement is so toxic and so judgmental. You know, I am kind of saddened by this point, and I never know what percent of people ragging on vegans when they quit being vegan is legitimate or not. I think John is being honest here. The vegan community is massive. We're talking millions of people. Of course, there are going to be toxic people in the vegan movement. Like any group of people, I wish that weren't the case. I'm trying to advocate for people to be less toxic in the vegan community. I think vegans need to do better you know, because they're already not the mainstream diet. They're fighting the status quo. But I do think it's unfortunate that there are vegans that he knows that don't want to be seen around him. No, I don't think if somebody's seen walking next to John Venus, their career is going to be ruined. And I think we just need to chill out a little bit more about that. Especially if you're a vegan who would really want John Venus to get back on board. You know, the last thing you need to do is be like, get out of my life. You know, you want to keep that channel of open communication there. I mean, who knows? <laughs> he was flipping, flopping back and forth quite a bit. He could even go back. I doubt it. And a really key point I think worth mentioning in general here is that the search for a perfect human diet is a little bit of a flawed one and that's just simply because humans cannot reach perfection if you are expecting to reach some type of perfection in diet it will not be possible humans are flawed a human given the perfect diet could be perhaps exposed to a little bit too much sun and end up getting some skin cancer no that's a morbid example but my point here is that how about just eat a really good diet that is healthy based around whole plant foods, avoiding animal products and processed foods, and you're gonna be doing really good. And there's probably other areas in your life that you could put effort into that would probably have a better result than that last 1% of perfection, such as not sitting too much, exercise, getting outdoors, you know, doing some meditation-y, yoga-y stuff. You get my point, you get it. And in terms of how your diet is gonna suit you, it's very, very clear the weakest possible argument you can make is that a vegan diet is as healthy as the diet that everybody else is eating. So for the animals alone, I think it's compelling to be eating a diet that is equivalent. Of course, I argue all the time that it is a healthier diet. You can watch all of my other videos on that. But I would just say, especially for John, it appears like he has no health risks. Why not continue not harming animals when you can? In the end, I think it's really unfortunate that John felt the need to quit his vegan diet. I don't think that he's going to be healthier for it. I am of the belief that people around him who are also quitting won't be healthier for it. That's my personal opinion. And I will say, logically, there were not very consistent arguments for why he personally quit. I also just had to address that point about the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics because that was just a little bit out there and not well-founded at all. Anyway, I know this video is probably a little bit lower quality. I just really wanted to be outside because it was a really nice day. But feel free to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think down below about this. Is my gut reaction of him sort of feeling more social family pressure to do this than logical or nutritional reasons, right? All right, thanks for watching. I'm gonna enjoy the great outdoors and see you next time.